To get some insight on how preference deals work, we're joined now by Glenn Drury. Glenn, thank you so much for coming in on Weekend Breakfast Sunday morning, nice and early for you. It certainly is. But of course, we're all very keen to understand how preferences will influence this election. They obviously had a massive influence in last election when we saw a result that brought us a hung parliament. So are you able to give us an assessment of how you see things lying at this point with those announcements yesterday? Well, of course, the full group voting ticket hasn't been published yet, and I'm yet to, to go through that and to see how that will impact precisely. But you're right, it will have a big impact. We may see the election of a couple of minor parties around the country. We've seen that the ALP have done a deal with CATA in Queensland, and we may see CATA elected in Queensland. Glenn, uh, in the view of many Australians, minor parties are flies in the parliamentary ointment. They get in the way. You think it works having independents and minor parties in Parliament. Why? Why is that? I think we've got to ask ourselves this question is what type of political system do we want in this country? I'm quite proud and happy to be associated with what I believe is a mature democracy where minorities get a say. At the end of the, the, the other end of the system is do you want something like in America, a two party system? I, I, I would think most Australians would like people to have a fair go. The Tony Abbott said the minor government, the minority government is an experiment that didn't work. So going by Mr Abbott's words, the two-party system seems to work just fine and the uh, alternative uh, throws up potentially all sorts of problems. Well, look, if you talk to the two major parties, they don't want independence there. They want to be able to govern in their own right and do what they want. But I believe the more people have a say, the fairer democracy we have and the better it is for the community. I mean, when you look at... Um political systems internationally, it's not altogether uncommon to have parliamentary systems where there is a great deal of toing and froing from minority parties. I mean, uh, is Australia somewhat of an exception that we haven't experienced as much of this? Well, you've only got to look at Italy and what's happened there in post-World War II. I mean, they've had more, more political parties, more governments than you and I have had hot breakfast, and that seems to work fine. Do you think so? It seems very unstable. Well, they've got one of the greatest standards of living in the world when you compare it to some places around the world. And again, I'd ask, what type of system do you want, really? Do you want it where people have a go, people have a say, or do you want a two-party system? You've also uh, stood yourself as a, an independent minor party candidate in various elections. Why would you put yourself through that? That's a good question. I mean, why indeed? I'm not standing this time. I'm helping others get elected. Um, in fact, it's, it's, it's now my, my business to, to work with small parties and, and, and uh, independents to, to get elected to Parliament. So, yeah, why indeed? Why would you run, want, want to run? But um, at the end of the day, it's, it's for the community. It's about community representation. Can you explain to us a little bit about the role that you play with supporting independents and minor parties in terms of developing those strategies? I imagine the strategies that you would have to have as an independent or a minor party would be quite different to what the major parties would be using. Oh, indeed. And the major parties all have people such as myself uh, working with them and explaining numbers and strategies and how things work. The majority of the people that are elected to parliament in the major parties don't really understand how they got there. Now, you might have uh, a new group come along, and I, th I think of a party like the Stable Population Party, for example, who are very philosophical about their views, and yet they don't really understand the intricacies of how the system works, how the deals are put together, how the numbers are done, and that's where I come in. I help groups like this. We talked a bit about the major parties' views of uh, a, a broad-ranging uh, approach to, to the parliamentary system. What's your feeling with the electorate this time around after going through a minor minority government for the past three years? What's the appetite in the electorate like for independents and minor party candidates? Well, I think we've got to, to, to separate what's going on in the lower house with what's going on in the Senate. We've just seen uh, a hung parliament with, with several independents' control of the country, effectively. A lot of people have said this is a bad thing for, the demo for democracy. Well, I, I think quite the opposite. I think this keeps the major parties honest, and I think they have to listen to the voice of the people in the community. Now, I worked in the New South Wales Parliament for a long time. I was privy to, to uh, many figures, and I was able to understand what happens in these seats where independents uh, uh, are in control. And I can tell you that you get more bang for your buck if you have an independent. Absolutely, but more so than, than, a, than a marginal seat. 